All right. Airplane is a remake, sort of. Oh, don't do this to me. Bill needs to, is a Kentucky Fried movie? What was first? Bill needs to watch this YouTube video. It tells the story of how Airplane was virtually a shot for shot. Oh, yeah, yeah, like those airport movies of another remake of another movie, but played for comedy versus drama. Definitely worth a watch. Thanks, you won't be disappointed. Yeah, they had all of those George Kennedy movies. It was a spoof of, uh, of those movies. All right, so I'm watching it right now. Zero Hour, 1957. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Now, somebody tried to tell me that Robert Stack didn't even get the movie. Um, oh, shit, this is my kids FaceTime me. I got to hit pause. All right, I'm back. I'm not really back. I fucking somehow recorded the last 20 minutes of the podcast and I didn't have the record on because I don't know what I did wrong. So at this point, uh, I'm watching the Patriots versus the Dolphins and the Dolphins, Jesus, oh, geez, they went right down the field with Teo Tuga Viola. Tago Viola? Sounds like a pitcher. Viola. Um, just shredded our defense. Just ran down the field like we weren't even there. Uh, Mac Jones, first pass of his NFL career. Good zip on the ball, first down. So the, the, the Mac Jones era has begun. Chains are out there looking to see if it was a first down. But you guys don't want to know this. You guys want to hear what I have to say to you guys with about the whole fucking shit that you wrote. I'm going to reread the. I literally just did this. I just did this. Ah, fourth and inches, you fucking cunt. All right. Here's somebody writes in. Airplane, which, by the way, is a movie that I was talking about that I really enjoyed. Um, that I, I watched again, and it totally holds up like... Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. Uh, Airplane is a remake, sort of, of this movie uh, Zero Hour from 1957. It's almost a frame-by-frame, I guess, remake of that movie combined with uh, all of those great airport movies that I used to watch. There was these TV movies that I can't even tell you what a friggin' event it was. There was like Airport 70, I don't know what, Airport 75, Airport 77, and then there was fucking uh, the last one. I want to say it was like Airport 81. I forget what it was, but it was like George Kennedy was always flying a plane. I remember the first one. It might have just been called Airport, and this guy got on a plane and, you know, he he brought a bomb on. I don't know what. He went to the bathroom. He blew out the half the fucking back of the plane, they got to land the thing, right? Probably not the best thing to talk about, uh, 20-year anniversary of 9-11, but, you know, this is what you guys wrote in, so here we go. And then the next one was... um, Don't even fucking say a fucking ball! God damn it, fumble, Patriots, you motherfucker. That was shaping up to be a nice drive there. Um... Let's see. Is his, is his knee down? Is the knee down? Does the ball come out? Uh, couldn't tell from that angle. That didn't look like a... F- oh, come on. What the fuck? That's not a fumble. So anyway, probably wasn't the best angle. We'll see. So anyway, um, then they had... It was such a hit, you know, Hollywood. It's like, well, they liked it. Let's do it again. Then they did Airport 75. That would, that, I think that one that landed in the fucking ocean. And they were underwater, and they needed somebody to save them, somehow raise them up. And then there was uh, Airport 77. I forget what happened on that one. And uh, I just remember the last one. George Kennedy was flying the, uh, the Concorde, which was something I always wanted to do, was to fly the Concorde from um, supersonic plane from, um, which I don't even know what that means, faster than the speed of sound maybe. From New York to uh, France, I actually took a picture of the plane one time. I was walking through Kennedy Airport in like the late 90s. And I just saw it. It was like famous. It was fucking iconic. It was one of the sickest looking planes ever. 
and uh, unfortunately, they had that crash. I believe a tire a tire blew and went up into the engine or something like that during takeoff, and they slammed into a, a, uh, a hotel. Well, that's uplifting, Bill. Well, that's what happened, and then they did away with it, and there hasn't been another supersonic jet since as far as a passenger one. But anyway, so then Airplane, the movie came out, making fun of those movies, but I guess it's also that movie Zero Hour, which I will definitely check out. Um, from 1957. As I told you guys, I like to disappear into the past. That's how I handle the news and all of that shit. I just fucking watch that shit. So, all right, let's get on to your next question that I've already fucking answered that you guys will never hear the answer to. Um, Screaming, oh, by the way, the the name of that YouTube video is uh, Side-by-Side Comparison uh, Airplane versus Zero Hour. Uh, if you want to check that out at work or whatever it is you're doing. All right, screaming at the top of your lungs. Oh, that is something I did today. I didn't want to disturb people in the hotel here. I was trying to sign on to NFL ticket, and I literally put my hand over my mouth, and I was just like, why is this so fucking difficult? Um, all right, screaming at the top of your lungs. It's really, I don't know if it's the direct TV website, it's like it just goes to this fucking page that tries to get you to sign up for it. And once you've already signed up for it, it's like that you still open it up on that page. And what you have to do is click on something on the right and then click on watch. And then you're okay. Um, so anyway, they called that a fumble. I must have had a bad angle. Jesus Christ, Patriots looking to be down. And I bet the Patriots this week. I also bet the fucking Cardinals, so that was a good pick. Let's see this. Where does the ball come out? Oh, that was close. I think that was a good call. You won't see it on this angle. I don't know. It was one of those things probably uh, there, were, there wasn't enough conclusive evidence. Blah, 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 blah. All right, screaming at the top of your lungs, which I think I'm going to be doing if the fucking Dolphins go up 14 to nothing. Come on. Come on, please stop the run. There we go. There we go. Third down. They're going to be out of field goal range here. I love it. I love it. Unless we fucking blow it here on third down. Okay. Hey, Bill. Lady listener here. I've been a big fan for over a year now. Sorry I'm late to the party and thanks for the laughs. I'm an opera singer. Well, geez, Louise. I mean, you guys are some of the best singers on the planet. You guys are like, you know, whatever auto tune is, you, you guys are the opposite of that. Um, I'm an opera singer, so keeping my voice healthy is a top priority in my field. Watching your specials, I'm amazed how you can scream so much during your shows and seemingly never become hoarse. I definitely, if I do a couple of shows, you know, if I do like five or six shows, I will definitely get hoarse. Or if I screw up and come from uh, my voice box area as opposed to my diaphragm, I will be in trouble. Uh, My question for you is, how have you lasted all these years without completely destroying your voice? I'd love to know your secret. Uh, It is no secret, and I'm actually scared that you're, as someone who sings professionally, that you're afraid for me. Um, So, uh, watching the replay here. Did we sack him? Did we sack him? Did we sack him? Did we? Yes, baby! Woo! Fuck you! Love it. Dolphins, back to punt from their own 41-yard line. Come on, take it back one time, one time. Just take it back here. Nice kick, nice kick. Doesn't fair catch. Sidesteps the first guy. We got a white guy, and he is on the ground. That was all right. I think he's kind of fast. All right, here we go. Mac Jones coming out for the second possession. Um, I actually messed up my voice early on in my career, imitating how my dad would cough and then try to draw air in. He made this really crazy sound that I, I still won't do because it, I, I can't even do it anymore. But I did it every night on stage as part of a bit back when people smoked in the clubs and I didn't realize I was destroying my voice. I can't even do the impression anymore. So um, I know I've done damage over the years probably, but um, early on, I was really, you know, you know, when I wanted to yell, I just came from my throat. So I actually took singing lessons from this old guy in Boston that barely charged any money 
on like Comav way back in the day. And the, and the rumor was that early on, he actually helped Steven Tyler with his voice. And if you notice the difference, bet- and I don't know if that's true or not, but if you notice the difference between Steven Tyler's voice on the first album, Aerosmith versus Get Your Wings, um, his voice sounds way better on the second one and sounds different. Like the first album, it doesn't even sound like him. And I think he probably, you know, heard his voice and eventually went to this guy. But whatever, the guy was great. And he kind of taught me how basically to yell and not come from uh, my voice, my throat area. That's how I tr- I try to avoid it. Um, you know, and there's other tricks that I can just do like, like not yelling and just being silly or whatever. But I will be honest with you. The fact that you're wondering how I haven't done permanent damage, destroying my voice, uh, it actually makes me a little concerned. Maybe because I've screamed my whole fucking life. I have a stronger (laughs) vocal cords. (laughs) They've been training. I don't know. I I have a temper, so I don't know. Maybe, Maybe that's it. I have no idea. So anyway. Plowing ahead here. Wedding advice. Don't do it. No. Uh, Wedding advice. Bill of fatty making fun of fatty's burr. Well, Jesus Christ, if that isn't the truest statement ever made. Um, By the way, I gave in to the temptation of the deli. Got a bacon, egg, and cheese last night and ate a pint of ice cream. I did that two nights ago, too. So, But I've been here for a number of days. I only did it two nights out of, like, seven so it still was bad but i'm not gonna do it tonight okay uh bill a fatty making fun of fatty's burr i have a small wedding i'm the best man uh coming up and wanted to know what you think about my toast um i'm so dumb i thought you literally meant your toast like okay what do you you burn it up what's the deal you're not talking about that toast what you think of the toast you will be making are it will be my friends and family a destination wedding only the grandparents are conservative. Everyone else is pretty cool. I was going to open up with a joke and then proceed to be more heartfelt about the bride and groom. Well, that's a great strategy. That's the old school roast. That's the way the old school roasts were. The new school roast is you just, I don't know what it is. You just don't even know the person. You eviscerate them. And then really quickly you go, hey, man, I always liked you. Um, I, like, I like your game plan here. He goes, here is what I was going to open with. Hello, I'm the best man, and I have known the groom since we were kids. In fact, I even remember his first girlfriend. Oh, Jesus. Uh, The relationship didn't last long, though. She took forever to download, and he was getting carpal tunnel. Does that suck? Any advice is good. Keep up the hard work. All right, that would bomb in a comedy club, but I mean, it's not a bad... It's not a bad joke, as far as joke structure. Um... You are bringing up past relationships. You are sort of alluding to him jerking off to the internet. I don't know how fucking cool people are. I don't know how much rum you're going to be drinking on the island or whatever that you're going to at all. You just read the room. I mean, personally, I would go with a story. First down, Patriots. I would go with a story that, um, I mean, if you're the best man, you got to be like best buds with this guy. Don't you guys have stories? of shit that you've done together that you did together. And, you know, some knucklehead story of the two of you guys that kind of makes fun of both of you as opposed to bringing up the fact that even though you're talking about, you know, him, you know, just jerking off the internet porn, you are kind of bringing up past relationships. I don't know. I would read the room. It's not a bad joke. It's a good wedding joke. Um, yeah, but I, I, you got to have a funny fucking story. Somebody locking their keys out of the car and you were drunk or the time you went on a road trip and it didn't fucking hit. It's something. Just, I, I would try to keep it light. The last thing you want to do is, is become a moment in the wedding. Okay? It's not your day. It's not even your buddy's day. It's her day. Okay? That's what the deal is. And where are the feminists on that day? They don't give a fuck that it's not a celebration of both people. It's, it's really her day. And if she's happy, it's a good wedding. You know? which really sets the tone for the marriage because it's all about if she's happy, then you can relax and maybe enjoy some of the day until she's upset. That's kind of how it works. All right, trying to become a reader. Oh, dude, preaching to the choir. Dear Billy Bookworm, 
My kid has read a lot of books for school. I envy the way he can just sit in a chair for an hour and read a book. Yeah, I envy that too. It must be nice to take your imagination for a spin and check out the world. I've never been able to do this, but I'm trying more these days. Well, that's good. Uh, It'd be nice to be all, ooh, ah, about some fantasy shit or even a crime novel. I got five pages into a book that I was really enjoying but got distracted by a work call. Uh, That was three weeks ago. I know you read books here and there. Yeah, more, more, more there than here. (laughs) And I was wondering if you have any tricks for shutting down your medieval mind. Hey, man, taking shots at me. Uh, what do you do before you read that helps clear your mind? Or what are you going or what are you doing to stay or what are you doing to stay with your head in the book? Thanks for the help. Oh, I have brutal concentration problems, uh, especially when it comes to reading. So um, I definitely have to not have anything that I'm stressing about in my life. All of that shit has to be out of the way. And if I'm actually going to read the book, then my phone can't be on or anywhere near me. And I also can't be uh, anywhere near, um, you know, a TV, other people or whatnot. So and then I just, you know, I go with light reading. You know, I don't read War and Peace. I read like the Jack Lambert story. You know, I'm not I'm not like. I just pick a subject that's light, you know, and, and I don't know, if you kind of start with easier books that don't have a lot of small print and, and a ton of pages, because I definitely find like, you know, I don't know, everything to me becomes like the goal. Like this is a 400 page book. Okay. If I read 50 pages a night, I can finish it in eight days. Rather than just going into it like, I'm going to read till I'm tired and I'll stop. You know, when I diet, I do the same thing. I'm going to lose two, three pounds of luck a week times seven weeks and I will lose my 21 pounds that I need to lose. Rather than just being like, hey, I'm going to change the way I eat and blah, 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 blah. Um, that's another reason why I got to get off the fucking road because, I mean, there's only so many times, you, you know, it's just, I don't know. Every place you go to is somewhere different and trying to drag your ass down to the gym yet also conserve yourself so you're going to get to the show and trying not to get sick. It becomes like, you know, and then you're hangry and all of that. You order something fucking awful. I'm sorry, Bill. Was this question about you and your road schedule? No, it wasn't. So that's what I would do. I would pick an easy book that isn't too many pages and I would get rid of all distractions around you and, and just be like, I'm going to get through five pages. Start off with small goals and walk it down. Patriots, first down and 10 on the 30-yard. Uh, Almost an interception. Um, I like this kid, man. He's got some zip on the ball. Pocket passer. Let's see what happened here. Did he lead him a little too much? Yes, he did. All right, let's get to the next question here. No, you know what? I'm going to watch the next play. Sorry. I just want to see this next play. All right? 13.36 to go in the second quarter for those of you playing at home. Um, All right. For some reason, they're showing the worst dress coach in the NFL. All right. Second and 10. Mac Jones. Pitch out. All right. Four or five yards. We'll take that. We will take that all day long. No flags. I love it. All right, let's get to kid. Girlfriend's sister. Uh, Jeez. What do you want to do, the combo platter there? You trying to bang her too? Hey, Billy Red Balls, I'm 20, and I've been dating my girlfriend for a few years now. It's been going great. However, she has a younger sister that won't shut up. Okay. She has a younger sister that won't shut up. Third and six. Sorry, you're going to have to, I got to watch a little bit of this drive here. Mac Jones. Oh, with the completion out of the flat. Oh, I love it. Down to the fucking 12-yard line. In Bill Belichick, we trust. This kid looks all right. I know it's just the Dolphins. I know it's just the first or second quarter of the first game of the year. I like the play calling. That guy wearing Jim Plunkett's old number. 
to Corey Myers. All right. What do we got here? All right, Mac Jones, first and 10, 12, 20 to go. Under center. The center's confused. He's talking to people. He hikes the ball. Mac Jones goes with his second option, corner the end zone, throws it away. Smart play. Smart play. All right, here we go. Um, I'm 20 and I've been dating this. She talks shit and brings up how in high school I used to smoke ganja all the time. I don't anymore. I've been pulling my life together. I don't smoke. I work out. I even started college for psychology. Good for you. But nothing changes her opinion of me. Well, why do you give a fuck what she thinks? My girlfriend and her mom has tried helping, but it's gone nowhere. Well, that's good that they're on your side anyway. I feel like a bitch just letting her walk all over me because if I do speak up, it will not be nice at all. She still thinks I'm some sort of hooligan who doesn't do shit. She hates men and only really respects any guys who are drop-dead gorgeous. I say this because I've only heard her talk good about dudes who are sculpted like Greek gods. She does swing both ways, and, I even, her, and even her on-again, off-again girlfriend trash me. Oh, Jesus. Well, I mean, you know, her girlfriend in her defense, her idea of you is from her girlfriend. So I try being nice by buying her Christmas gifts and birthday gifts. She will then be nice for one day, but immediately after she goes back to trashing me and hating me. All right. So what you have on your hands here is a cunt. So what you should, (laughs) what you should do, what I would do, the first thing you do is be really nice to her girlfriend. Always compliment her. Hey, I really like that shirt. Laugh at her jokes. Just always say something nice. Hey, good to see you. You know what I mean? Just divide and conquer. And then when her twat of a sister gives you shit, just agree with her. Smoke ganja. I'm fucking dealing now. I actually have some buried under the house. I'm going to take you guys all down with me. I would just do that. Sarcasm, agree with her. And, you know, just laugh. And just then it becomes a one-sided war. I think the reason why she's still doing this to you, aside from maybe some personal issues, is that she sees that it's, it's getting to you and she's getting a rise from you. Um, he says here in the last paragraph, she's a hurt human who causes a lot of her own issues and she's very hypocritical. Sounds like your standard human being. I mean, you just described me. Uh, myself as well as her family don't know how, don't know what to do. I started, I'm starting to hate being around my girlfriend's house and I love her family. So it's hard. Any advice will help by the way. Nice show in Boston. Thank you. Well, thank you for coming out. I would just have fun with it, dude. Um, you're letting a person that has no effect on your life. Uh, another fumble by the Patriots recovered. Thank Christ. Johnny on the spot. Number 60. Um, yeah, you just, you just, there's no reason to let this person affect you. All right. You you know why she's doing this shit. It has nothing to do with you. That did just kill the drive. Son of a bitch. All right. Here comes a field. Folk. Oh, Keith Folk was good luck for the Red Sox. There we go. He's written more like folk music. Hey, you know, I was thinking this the other day. Did you hear, um, I guess at one point Donald Trump told his followers to get the vaccination and then they booed him. I got such a kick out of that. If that even happened, I didn't see it. Somebody told me that that happened, that they booed him. And then I was thinking like, you know what? That must, that's like the politician equivalent of like when Bob Dylan went electric, you know, he was playing acoustic and everybody's like, yeah, man, coffee house, acoustic. And then he came out electric and then all his fans were like, boo. Do what you always did. <laughs> I feel like that's what happened to him. Um, like I said, even if, in fact, if that even happened. Anyway, that is the podcast. Uh, to that last kid, just fucking have fun with it. Just agree with her. You fucking pothead. I know. You know, thank God I haven't moved on to Coke yet. Or have I? I would just do that. And then to say to her girlfriend, hey, you know, you got, I like your shirt. <laughs> I'd just do that. I would just have a fucking great time with it. And, um, you know, I guess that's what you have to do. I don't know. I, it's, it's too bad you're dealing with that. But just know that eventually, um, if that 
if her sister continues to go the route she's going, she's, you know, it's going to be a train wreck, which you really shouldn't wish on anybody. But if she's being an asshole to you, at least it won't feel tragic. You can maybe kind of enjoy the fact that she's uh, completely f- miserable because that's what she sounds like, you know. But whatever you do, don't get mad at her, you know, and say something fucked up because then she'll use that against you. She just try to have a good time. All right. So that's it, everybody. That is the podcast. By the way, how about the AL East? The Yankees, who just took command, winning 13 in a row, have all of a sudden, you know, lost all these fucking games, like 10 out of 11 or something nuts. They won last night on 9-11 against the Mets. And out of nowhere, the Toronto fucking, you know, I'm not going to say Maple Leafs if we're talking playoffs, the Toronto fucking uh, Blue Jays are actually in it. So now it's a three-way race, and everyone was predicting this Red Sox-Yankees, and for all you know, one of the, somebody might go home. Well, there's three people for two slots, so at some point the song stops and only two people have a chair there, right? Um, Yankees could go home, the Red Sox could go home, or maybe fucking, uh, what do you call it there? The fucking, um, the Blue Jays. Who knows? Who knows? Um, All right, that's it. I'm going to watch the Mac Jones era here. It is seven to three. Um, And I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. All right, that's it. Go fuck yourselves. I'll check in on you on Thursday. See you. Thank <laughs> you.